Hello all. Today I'm going to show off, uh, or demonstrate I guess it would be, the better terminology, the uh, new purchase that I made. It's the Acoustic Research, uh, at least in the U.S., branded Excite Touch 18 device universal remote control with native, which means it can actually control it without any extra add-ons. Uh, direct TV RF or radio frequency control. Um, start with the box. Yep, the box that came in. I'm not going to do an unboxing. It's already unboxed. I was really pleased even with the way the box was presented. Uh, magnetic flapped case. Uh, I mean, that uh, Universal Electronics really uh, took time when they built this. Uh, box because you could actually put the remote back in here um, as such, you know, kind of like that, and and then close it, and then it's that's protected pretty much in there. So, and you could put all the accessories and everything that it came with it back in the box if you wanted to. Um, you know, well, let's say you want to put it in storage or something. Get that out of the way. All right. To start with, let's look at the display. Focus. Thank you. Uh, it's got a touch sensitive uh, slider bar. Now, it kind of takes some getting used to. You, you kind of. There's no delicate way of saying this. You just have to uh, rub the screen the right way. And I know there's going to be puns coming out of that and comments, but keep them. Keep them to yourself or keep them clean, whatever. This is a tutorial, demo, whatever. Anyway, but you do have to kind of be, you just have to have the right touch with it and um, it, it's kind of finicky. Um, there's sometimes I can just go right to it and it'll just, like that, it'll just take it. Uh, it seems to do better with the, not with like this, but like this. Uh, it must be the way the touch sensors are arranged. Uh, if it's done like this most of the time, most of the time, uh, it'll respond. It just you really have to kind of you have to have you're just the right touch with it. But enough just talking about that one little feature. It's got um, right off the bat. I'll wait for the screen to go off and show this off here. got six touch capacitive um, resistive touch buttons or sensors and your finger has to land right in the middle of those strips that you see there in the image and if they land off of it okay, I'm touching away from the strip see display doesn't come on but if I touch right on it it comes on This is, of course, like I said, it's an 18 device um, programmable. Right, going through the controls from the top, you got a power button which can control device, or, or and I think you can even can control all of the system um, with the website at least. Um, you've got the touch control buttons, which we'll get to that in a second. While you don't really need too many of them. You've got duplicate keys. Yay, they basically duplicated everything. It's like they realized that uh, the touch screen might not be that easy to, to navigate, so they duplicated the keys down here. Um, everything that's duplicated on the home page, favorites, activities, and devices, is duplicated down here except for the home key, which takes you back here. The only real reason that, personally, I have to navigate this screen is if I'm in a, a, a mode and there's touch buttons, or if I have to configure it. Okay, controls. You got the guide button, focus. There. Guide, menu, info, and exit. You can use that for most televisions, DVDs, uh, satellite cable box receivers, etc. Volume, mute, up, down, D pad, or arrow keys. Some have complained that these keys are not big enough. Um, they're a lot better than some other remotes I've had um, where, and the only 
example I can give is I'll pull up my DirecTV remote. It's got these kind of smooshy, uh, soft buttons underneath. And if it's real tiny, sometimes it's real hard to make that go down. But if you've got if you got this, which just has a nice affirming click, then you know it's made contact. You've got channel buttons, which unfortunately do not say channel. Um, you know, most of them. I mean, this you know what this is going to do, but this you might not know. Uh, previous channel button. You've got the colored keys. Um, the red, green, yellow, and blue. You've got your DVR, VCR, DVD, whatever, for those still using VCRs. Uh, controls, you got replay, play, skip forward, rewind, pause, fast forward. If you've got DirecTV, this is your playlist button. If you've got anything else, this is your recordings button, so wherever your recordings are at. Stop and record. Uh, now one thing that might not have been an exact forethought when designing this remote is maybe building a button up here that controlled the recordings function up here because usually when you press the recordings function example if this exit button with that recordings button you could press it and you can immediately go through the recordings list and select what you want but you have to dive down here dive up here select it and go from there you've got your number pad and it also serves course is a um, letters for going through most receivers uh, a lot of cable boxes use that as well and then you can also program the on-screen touch buttons with that okay, we will dive through the settings or the just show the devices I've got programmed this is everything I've got on the device at the current time pretty much everything I've got like I said, you got to have just the right touch with that. But, so we'll go back to the home screen. We'll, it's got uh, built-in device setups. So you can actually add a device or to it. It doesn't have a complete library. This is where the computer comes in. It has a uh, more robust library. I can view the codes that have already been put in, and I can also delete a device. I can loan an entire remote, which I've had to do, and I'll describe it in the later on this video, or you can learn just an individual command if it's not on the website or if you don't want to use the website. Volume lock, which can be done on the device and on the website. Uh, Built-in clock, which is not set correctly right now. Audio, which really just controls the tonality of... Uh, a little feedback from the display. Uh, brightness. You've got a screen timeout function. Save battery life there. Language. Uh, this is the. This is kind of confusing. It, at least it would be to, to some people. Direct TV, RF, and RF. This is actually for the extender, which is extra. It does not come standard. This allows you to transmit to this RF extender, which basically duplicates everything that comes out of the uh, front of it, the infrared receiver, or transmitter, I should say. Everything that comes out of the infrared transmitter is duplicated in a radio frequency to a base station, which can be hidden behind an AV cabinet and can transmit the same functions even if you're not in the same room or not aiming the remote at the device. DirecTV RF, that does not require that e extra base station, which is kind of expensive. It's about, uh, I paid about 60 bucks for it. It's even more than the remote, which is right now on Amazon going for about, well, about 60 as well. So it's about the same price for the RF extender as the remote. But you don't have to have the other part, the RF on or off. That deep, the RF, duplicates all the commands for the remote. Everything from television to anything that you program into the remote will duplicate. This will only duplicate one DirecTV receiver. Um, 
in my case, uh, I have two receivers in one room. I wanted to have one on infrared, one direct TV receiver on infrared control, and one on RF control, or radio frequency control. And even though I have two discrete codes programmed in, um, it would not recognize it. It, it uh, would not control it. It would try to default, and so I had to actually learn using that learn function button that I was uh, showing off earlier here. Uh, actually learn the entire remote literally like um, focus. Take uh, the DirecTV remote, the sensor for learning is back here, and just program each key pretty much like that, just down the line. Um, it's got a tilt sensor, and this is why I'm actually, I actually did the first view of this and I decided to redo it because uh, I forgot to mention this, this feature. Uh, it's a tilt sensor, which no, it's not like a video game thing. But what it is, and I'll show it. Give it a second. Maybe I have to get out of the menu first. Okay. Okay, now the screen's gone off. Now the second I touch it, it comes back on. Now there's, I think, oh, that's a great feature. It turns it off. No. Any tap will turn that thing back on. Any tap. I've literally had it sitting in its little charging cradle, which I'll get to in a moment here. And I can come in the room, and just the vibrations from the floor cause this thing to uh, come back on. So I had to actually turn that off. It became more of a headache than it's worth. station. This actually would not come with a with a harmony, I can tell you that, at least not without paying a, a lot of money. Keep the unit charged up. Now I'm gonna try to maybe edit this video on the computer and include a link to the website, the uh, website video I did. Or I'll just do it right here, I don't know. But you can actually um, control it, right, uh, set it up on the website. It's got a glossy back, kind of a soft touch thing where you can put your fingers when you hold it got good weight, good balance. Now, one thing about it being 60 bucks, uh, the, it's got kind of rough edges along with the remotes put together. And then some spots up here that I'm not sure what that actually is, but uh, focus. Focus. There we go. And if it's manufacturing, again, it's only a $60 remote. For, for 60 bucks, you really can't beat it. I'm going to pause here right quick. There will be no sound and no video for about 5 seconds. I'll get into the computer and show you the website interface.